The Great Lakes have been sailed upon since the 17th century, and during that time, it is estimated that 6,000 vessels have been lost. Imagine diving into Lake Huron and stumbling upon the ruins of a 10,000-year-old city that nobody knew existed, not in the Mediterranean, not in some exotic tropical ocean, right here in the Great Lakes of North America. For over a century, archaeologists suspected ancient societies might be hiding beneath these frigid waters, but they had zero proof until 2013 when a team pulled up a chunk of mud from 100 feet underwater and found something that changed everything. What they discovered wasn't just a few old tools. It was evidence of a massive trade network, advanced technology, and a lost civilization that thrived when woolly mammoths still walked the earth. And the craziest part? We're only beginning to understand what's really down there. In 2013, we recovered two pieces of a glassy-like substance. Somehow, at around 9,000 years ago, obsidian traveled 4,000 kilometers uh, from the Pacific Northwest uh, to the middle of what is now the Lake Huron Basin. Let's start with the discovery that kicked everything off. Scientists were extracting sediment samples from the bottom of Lake Huron, just routine research work, when they found something unusual inside a chunk of mud about the size of a milk carton. Two tiny flakes of black, glassy material that looked completely out of place. These weren't random rocks. They were obsidian, a volcanic glass that forms when lava cools so quickly it doesn't have time to crystallize. Obsidian is incredibly sharp, sharper than modern surgical steel, making it the ultimate material for ancient cutting tools. But here's the problem. There's no obsidian anywhere near Lake Huron. The closest volcanic sources are hundreds of miles away. After careful analysis, researchers traced these flakes back to their source, Central Oregon. That's roughly 2,500 miles away from where they were found. Think about that for a second. 10,000 years ago, someone was carrying obsidian tools or raw material across an entire continent. This wasn't a casual hiking trip. This was evidence of an extensive, organized trade network connecting communities across North America. The flakes themselves told a story. Under magnification, you could see the characteristic marks of human toolmaking, the feathered edges where someone struck the stone with precise force, the deliberate chipping patterns that only come from skilled craftspeople. These weren't natural formations. They were manufactured goods that somehow ended up on the bottom of what would eventually become Lake Huron. Just call this stretch the Alpena Amberley Ridge. For years, it was nothing more than a name on a map, a geological curiosity buried under 100 feet of icy freshwater. To understand how a civilization ended up at the bottom of a lake, we need to rewind to the end of the last ice age. About 10,000 years ago, the Great Lakes looked completely different. Water levels were much lower, and what's now deep underwater was dry land. The Alpena Amberley Ridge was a natural land bridge connecting what we now call Michigan and Ontario. It wasn't underwater, it was a high point in the landscape perfect for spotting migrating animals like caribou. Early humans recognized this strategic advantage and built hunting structures along the ridge, elaborate traps designed to funnel animals into killing zones. Then the climate changed. As the massive ice sheets covering North America began melting, water flooded into the Great Lakes Basin. Slowly but surely, the Alpena Amberley Ridge sank beneath the rising water. The hunting camps, the tools, the entire landscape that ancient people called home disappeared underwater, preserved by Lake Huron's cold, oxygen-poor depths. This underwater preservation turned out to be archaeology's best friend. On land, organic materials rot quickly. Wood decays, leather disintegrates, plant remains turn to dust. But underwater, especially in cold freshwater environments, things last. The frigid water essentially creates a natural time capsule, freezing everything in place for thousands of years. Now, for hundreds of years, the buried city of Pompeii has given archaeologists astonishing snapshots of life in Asian Rome. But it still holds some secrets. When researchers finally began serious underwater exploration of the site, they discovered something extraordinary. This wasn't just a few scattered artifacts. It was an entire landscape frozen in time, like an Ice Age version of Pompeii. They found ancient trees with their root systems still intact, exactly where they grew 10,000 years ago. They discovered peat bogs, waterlogged deposits of compressed plant material that normally decompose on land but survived underwater. Inside these bogs were pine needles, seeds, and leaves in remarkable condition, offering a detailed snapshot of what the environment looked like when humans lived here. The stone tools they recovered were particularly interesting. Compared to tools from the same time period found nearby on land, the ones from the underwater site were significantly smaller. This might seem like a minor detail, but to archaeologists, it's huge. Different groups of people made tools in distinctive ways, kind of like regional dialects in language. The smaller tools suggest a different community lived on the Alpena Amberley Ridge, one with its own unique cultural practices and technological traditions. What's really exciting researchers is the potential locked inside those peat bogs. The team is working with scientists at Cambridge University in England to extract ancient DNA from the preserved plant material. If successful, they'll be able to identify exactly what species lived in this ecosystem, how the climate differed from today, 
and possibly even traces of the animals humans hunted. It's a major discovery that for the last 2,000 years has been lying buried beneath volcanic rock and ash. Studying a 10,000-year-old site that's permanently submerged 100 feet underwater presents some serious challenges. You can't just walk around with a clipboard taking notes. Everything requires specialized equipment and innovative techniques. The research team has deployed an arsenal of modern technology. They use sonar systems to create detailed maps of the lake floor, identifying potential archaeological features before sending divers down. Underwater robots equipped with cameras can explore areas too deep or dangerous for human divers, capturing high-resolution footage of artifacts in their original positions. When divers do go down, they work in frigid water with limited visibility, carefully documenting everything they find before disturbing it. Unlike terrestrial archaeology, where you can set up a grid and spend weeks slowly excavating, underwater work happens in short, cold dives where every minute counts. The techniques developed here are revolutionizing underwater archaeology. Other researchers studying submerged sites around the world are watching this project closely, learning from the methods and technologies being pioneered in Lake Huron. What starts here could change how we explore underwater archaeological sites everywhere. Let's travel across the world to another remarkable underwater discovery. Off the southern coast of Greece lies Pavlopetri, officially the oldest submerged city ever found. At roughly 5,000 years old, this Bronze Age settlement predates even the legendary heroes of Homer's epic poems. The city was first spotted in 1904, then essentially forgotten until 1967, when archaeologist Nicholas Fleming rediscovered it lying under 10 to 13 feet of crystal clear Mediterranean water. The following year, Fleming returned with a team armed with nothing more than hand tapes and a basic grid system. Over six weeks, they managed to map an entire city. What they found was astonishing. The city covered an area of roughly 1,000 feet by 500 feet and contained at least 15 buildings, courtyards, five streets, two tombs, and about 37 small stone graves. They recovered pottery, obsidian tools, church blades, and even a tiny bronze figurine potentially dating back to 2800 BCE. The site was then left alone again until 2009, when a new team returned with modern digital mapping technology and advanced diving equipment. This time, they uncovered an additional 97,000 square feet of structures, including a large hall and previously hidden streets. Their findings suggested the city supported a population between 500 and 2,000 people from around 3,000 BCE to 1100 BCE. Nobody knows exactly why Pavlopetri ended up underwater. Most scientists believe an earthquake, possibly around 1000 BCE or even as late as 375 CE, caused the land to sink or triggered a tsunami that submerged the city. Because it's the oldest underwater city ever discovered, some speculate it might have inspired the legend of Atlantis itself. There are huge areas of the world that have never been looked at by archaeology at all. Or if looked at by archaeology, looked at only minimally. Now let's head to Japan for one of the most controversial underwater discoveries ever made. In 1986, a local diver exploring waters near the Ryukyu Islands discovered something massive lying 82 feet underwater. The Yonaguni Monument, as it's now called, looks like a giant stepped pyramid with sharp edges, flat platforms, and what appear to be deliberate architectural features. The structure measures nearly half a football field in size, with layers of platforms and steps stacked on top of each other in a way that looks almost impossibly precise. Some experts believe it could be more than 10,000 years old, predating the Egyptian pyramids. Theories range from it being the last remains of a mythical lost civilization called Mu, a Pacific equivalent of Atlantis, to it being built by ancient Japanese cultures dating back to 12,000 BCE, but many scientists remain deeply skeptical. They point out that the entire monument is still connected to bedrock, meaning it wasn't assembled block by block like a true building. The layered structure could easily result from natural geological processes, particularly in an area as tectonically active as the Pacific Ring of Fire. Similar natural formations exist above water, like the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. However, one marine geologist who repeatedly explored the site claims to have found tool marks, carved symbols, and rock formations deliberately shaped to resemble animals. He believes he's identified 10 different structures including a ruined castle, a triumphal arch, five temples, and a large complex connected by roads and channels. He bases his dating on stalactites found in nearby underwater caves, which only could have formed after the caves flooded, suggesting the site is at least 5,000 years old. The debate continues. Supporters argue that natural erosion doesn't create such precise geometric shapes. Skeptics insist underwater currents and geological processes can explain everything. The site remains open to divers who want to form their own opinions about whether they're seeing nature's handiwork or the ruins of a lost civilization. From the cold depths of Lake Huron to the warm waters of the Mediterranean and Pacific, 
Underwater archaeology is revealing civilizations we never knew existed. The obsidian flakes from Oregon, the hunting camps of the Alpena Amberley Ridge, the Bronze Age streets of Pavlopetri, and the enigmatic steppes of Yonaguni all tell us the same thing. Our ancestors were far more connected, advanced, and widespread than we ever imagined. What makes these discoveries so powerful is that they're still happening. Right now, researchers are using cutting-edge technology to explore sites that have been hidden underwater for thousands of years. Every dive brings new artifacts, new structures, new pieces of the puzzle. The Lake Huron site alone has years, possibly decades, of research left to do. And here's what should really blow your mind. These are just the sites we've found. How many more ancient cities, trade routes, and lost civilizations are still down there, waiting beneath the waves? As climate change continues melting ice sheets, and as technology keeps improving, we're going to discover more and more evidence that rewrites human history. If you're as fascinated by these underwater mysteries as we are, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss future discoveries that could change everything we know about our past.